How you doing, mate? Good, how are you? Good. I've adopted a bad English accent within only seconds of our meeting. Isn't that <laughs> terrible? How does no that... We can... Oh, hang on one sec. Sure. Hang on, I just had a spillage. Hold on. That's not good, but the computer around. All right. Yeah. We, can switch. we can also uh, switch to audio in a minute if you want. Yeah, probably good. Stronger connection, bigger pipeline, all that. But yeah, I'm, I'm sitting on the side of a road in Calgary. Right. So it's probably not going to be very good. Yeah. It's not so bad, actually. It's, you know, she's walking through the lot there. It's pretty oh, yeah. Over the, uh, over the trailer. I'm trying to find the... Um... You, there you go. You look good. Okay. Both of us look very good, I think. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you for... Geez, thanks for squeezing this in. I mean... Did you just rap on something? I'm no, I'm in the middle of shooting. Okay. I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm shooting a TV sh uh, series in um, Calgary. Oh, okay. So we're about halfway through. Oh, very good. Is it true? Just to get this out of the way too, when I was just looking up, making sure I was fully up to date on what's going on with you, as much as possible, anyway, that you also shot an episode of Twin Peaks. Um, I don't know if it's an episode. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, you're maybe slated to do? I'm in Twin Peaks, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, just... I hope it's as many episodes as you, you know, wish it to be. Though. I don't know. He just come in and shoot with David and he does what he does, what he feels like he needs. Yeah. Speaking of which, also, not to waste too much more time, did you see him on that Louis C.K. show, uh, David Lynch? It's it's unbelievable. Is that the one that, that what's it called? Um... Well, it's not the one that was on his website, uh, which is called Horace and Pete. Oh, yeah, I like that show. I think but it's the one that was on that. FX. It was on FX. FX, was it? You know, and there's an episode, there's a couple of episodes with David Lynch, which are brilliant. I just I just wanted to make you yeah. aware of it. You yeah. hadn't seen it. But here we're going to talk about... I love David. Sorry? I love David. He's great. It's a dream to get him on here eventually, but I don't know if I'm, if I'm expert enough to talk to somebody like David Lynch. That's not true. I'm being... I'm just being self-deprecating. So thanks again for squeezing this in then. Oh, no worries. Now, you just did this musical comedy, Chronic. <laughs> yeah, it's a light comedy. <laughs> yeah. It's a laugh uh, riot. <laughs> no, it's very heavy duty. And um, I, I understand you're very pleased and, and with it, and as was I, having watched it, uh, was after seeing it, very eager to talk to you about it. Knowing that you were proud of it made me all the more excited to talk to you about it because you know it's just a it's a great sign you know? yeah and you're like in every scene just about well i i love it i i i really do I, i'm very proud of it it's, it's i think it's one of the best things i've been involved in and um but and i and i'm working with those filmmakers again you know i'm working with them i worked with um the producer of it he directed his first film and i did that and i'm Kind of helping yeah. out on another one that Michelle's doing. Michelle Franco, director of Chronic, is doing, and then I'm going to film with him again. Oh, very good. I, I, it's a relationship. I think we'll, we're going to keep going, and I think we're also we're, we're talking about setting up an American arm of their uh, film company as well. Production I see. Company. So it's kind of a uh, creative company to develop projects. Yeah. That you, yeah. That's yeah. that's great. Well, it's great because I mean. You know, there's the talk, even though I'm, I I don't know that I always see evidence of it, but like the talk is always in the industry is like you can't get dramas made, you know. And I understand this is a very low budget and they're, they're probably mean in the bigger budget uh, sphere. But I mean, uh, this is for, you know, this is just feeds the soul, a film like this, you know, it's it's uh, I mean, it's a jagged pill on some level. And I mean that in the best way, but um, it really requires a level of emotional um, presence when you're watching it. Yeah, I think so. I mean, going back to what you said just before, the difficulty in, <clears throat> excuse me, is is not in making them so much. It's getting them into a cinema, just maybe one screen, you know, somewhere. Mm. You can do the festival circuit with them, but in the end, you can't get past Marvel or you know, whatever it may be, and into right. the cinema. It's very, very hard to do. It's a very limited um, life that these films have, in, where they're where they're supposed to be seen, which is in the cinema. In the end, they they live on the internet. 
Correct. Yes, of course. Yeah. I mean, here in New York, and I, I, I'm like repeating this uh, almost every episode. It just keeps coming up. We're actually building more th- movie theaters in New York, uh, more rooms. Yeah. So, you know, in, in independent houses, because of, I think that, you know, there there seems to be in a city like New York anyway, chronic is still something that there's a hunger for. And uh, so there's like an Alamo draft house that just went up in Brooklyn. Yeah. You know, and the rather IFC Center is building extra theaters and extra rooms, you know, so it's a good sign in that regard. Uh, it, is, it is. I mean, that's, I mean it, it's a limit, you know, you get a limited release, but, you know, well, I think New York has a love affair with independent cinema and always has. You know, there's there's a, a, a small kind of niche of that in LA. You know, um, Quentin's got his own cinema down there. He he programs and shows the New Beverly. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, so it's a, it's a uh, you know we have we have a we have a chance. You get a shot at it, but not for very long. It's and it's a sad thing I think because when I came to um, America. Um, when I came to America, it was uh, I, I was I was encouraged to stay because they, I was being employed by first-time filmmakers, small independent filmmakers, and so on. It was kind of it, it, you know, and it's the stuff that I love, you know, and it's it's harder to do now. The, well, Chronic is uh, coming out shortly. It is, and I'll in my intro, I'll make sure to specifically uh, refer yeah, to <laughs> yeah to where and when and all that. Don't worry. Um, oh, and I, by the way, I hate keep I keep losing focus, but I notice Antonio Campos is also one of the producers on the film or co-producer, and yeah. uh, he he has a new movie coming out shortly too. But he he's been on this show; he's great. Oh, good. Yeah, but I was going to say is uh, it's um, the title refers to well, it has a couple of different meanings, right? Uh, it's a smart title. It, it one 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 level you're you're playing David. Is that the character's name? Yeah. David, who is a nurse. We don't have to say male nurse anymore. <laughs> no, apparently not, which is rather good. Yeah. Yeah, we're evolving, aren't we? Yeah. So you're playing a nurse at, who is a home health aide, essentially, for people, uh, clients who who are dying. Yeah, he's a, he's a palliative uh, nurse. He's a, yeah, an in-house hospice um, yeah. nurse, yeah. But the the chronic really kind of refers more to David than his clients, correct? I mean, he's his level of commitment, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, is 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 past, um, you know, what is considered typical, well past that, to like almost an obsessive level, right? With his clients getting so close and so involved in their lives. Well, I, the nurses that I met and, and that I. Um... Are trained with, I have to say, have that kind of commitment. Um, quite, 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 it, quite a few of them that I that I, I spent time with, and mm-hmm. and the patients that I met um, loved them. I mean, they and 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 the there is they were, they always talked about um, they talked about uh, the family. Um, and the relationship that they have with the family and, and some of the best um, nurses that I, I encountered um, counsel the family as well as the patient uh, uh, as they're heading towards the end of, uh, of their life. So they prepare them as well to, en- to at least try to enjoy the, their last moments with, with the, the family member that's about to go. So um, they have this deep commitment. On the other hand, um, Sometimes it is, um, it, it's, how, how, what we best say, it's uh, misconstrued. You know, it's it's taken as something else, you know, and there's jealousy and there's envy and there's worry and there's, there's crisis um, from the other family members, you know. Yeah. So it, it's a difficult one. It, it, it can go, it can go wrong. And, sure. Uh, and right. as we, we show a, a, a little of that in the film. Oh, we, you sure do. But. It's interesting. So these nurses really act as family counselors on a certain level too. Yeah. Um, and are it's a yeah. I could see how that could be very com- all these complicated relations could be very tricky to navigate. Uh, yeah. The woman I know whose father w- uh, died, and she said that the time that she had with him, the last six months of his life, mm-hmm. was the best time she ever had with him, and that was because of the preparation that was put in. 
place uh, by the, the, the care workers. Can I ask a very personal question, um, or relatively? I mean, have you lost your parents, or are they still around? Yeah, no, they, my parents are, are both dead now, yeah. Sorry to hear it. I only ask because um, I myself, uh, maybe this is one of the reasons why I was so moved by the film, is I have a parent who you know, is currently uh, going through such a situation where we had one um, one person there who developed a very close relationship with her. We, yeah. you know, and then circumstances changed, and and it wasn't because that that aid was uh, too close to her or anything like like is depicted in Chronic, but uh, just circumstances required us to make a shift. But I understand the this this uh, process is is take is it's it's so uh, long ongoing. She, my mother has uh, dementia, but yeah. um, you know it's just a, it's an on, it's a never ending. Um, process of is uh, a difficult one because it can it, it, it can be extremely painful for the families it can be extremely uh, and it's incredibly worrying and disturbing for the for, for the patient the person who's, who's experiencing it and if that's generally where you need that's where you're going to need some kind of if you can um some some way where you can put them um, david some, uh, the assisted living. sorry say that again some kind of assisted living, I think, is what he went up with, you know. Yes, uh, at some point or other. Um, yeah. Typically, yeah. D- so, but D- David also has his own cr- uh, ongoing crisis um, at, at, you know, in his own family life. And I think it seems to me that, you know, it seems that what you're trying to do here is show the man who is compensating for his own family failures by embedding himself uh, on some level or attempting to embed himself. Uh, in other families to yeah compensate, um, yeah, which which is really I, mean, I think it's, it's it's also a way of, of, of in in a strange way of, of paying penance, right? For, for the past, you know, uh, up you know up to a point, you know, uh, um, yeah, it's complicated that one. <laughs> 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 so when when you were when you got this script, did you just feel like you connected with David on a certain level? Or you thought, well, I know what I could, I could, I understand this guy, and I want people to have the experience of of getting to know this man and and what he's going through. What, what, yeah, I, but it, it was a it was a process. The script itself, the first the the first draft of it came very quickly. Michelle, and then we worked um, constantly on on rewriting, restructuring, and, and you know we we spent some time um, just dealing with that, just just dealing with the with the writing aspect of it. And then once again, when we when we got on to uh, you know what, when I'd gone through the training and when I uh, when we got to the set uh, again, we would the writing process continued in a way. So. It, but the but the character himself um, was decided very early, and it was somebody that I felt I felt I felt very close to, but I felt very um, protective of mm-hmm. as well. I, it was that was a kind it was a kind of love affair, you know. Uh, he, he's uh, he's such a he's such a good man, you know. He's such a broken but good man, you know. And I I I I, I, I loved that. I loved him, you know. He's, he's trying so, really hard. Yeah. He's trying so hard, it, yeah. and, and it's, it's, it's such a painful existence for him. <laughs> yeah, we can't. Yeah, um, uh, I'm a, t- completely avoiding the epilogue, the the yeah. last moments. <laughs> you know, I'm a sensitive guy. I'm and I'm not a complete idiot, uh, but um, I've seen this happen in films, and then I, 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 I I'm still shocked and very angry at you <laughs> for about a minute or two, and then I oh, started. Uh, it's it's it's. It's uh yeah, so it's it's, a, it's an extraordinary finish. Yeah. Um and people and it, and people are divided and I like, I'm very happy about that. So uh, I will I'll word it as saying the resolution, uh, for yeah. lack of another word, of the film, it will leave audiences divided. That's that's a great way of putting it. Um, yeah. I just remembered uh, Michelle Franco uh, having watched. I think it was at. I can't remember if it was at the New York Film Festival or at the um, New Directors. It probably was the New Directors because it was his first film, Daniel and Anna, seeing that oh, and yeah. being very yeah. impressed. And I forgot that this is the same director until just now. His, well, when I met um, Michelle, I was, uh, the, I was the president of the Certain Regard jury in Cannes. Yeah. And um, 
And I, that when I'm running a jury there or anywhere really, um, the one, one of the rules that I make is that no one's allowed to read the program. You're not allowed to read anything or find out anything about the film. And um, you're, you, well, the only thing you're allowed to know is what the nationality of the director and um, whether it's the first film or not. That's, that's the only information we go into a screening uh, with. And so I went to see uh, Dispressed Lucia, which is uh, his second film, I think. Mm -hmm. That was the one that we were, we were being shown after Lucia. And we were devastated by it. Absolutely devastated. The jury, again, was divided. Um, but, but the worst of the film was, was without. It was peerless. You know, it was an extraordinary thing. Um, and we gave him the, 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 the prize. In certain regard. And then um, afterwards, I said to him, I asked him, I took him for a beer and I said, well, what are you doing next? What's the plan? And he said, I want to make a film about a, a nurse. I said, well, make it a guy and I'll do it. And the draft, the first draft came very, very quickly. It was, it was, you know, he 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 writes very fast, and then we start to pick it apart. Does he write in English? Michelle is a Mexican. Uh, uh, he writes in Spanish first, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then in English. Very good. So he he's completely free at the beginning, and then you know, and I helped him with the translation. His his next film is uh, that he's doing is the heirs. Uh, it's no, it's it's in. Mexico. Oh, very good. But okay. it's an English-speaking and Spanish-speaking film, I think. I'm, I, I was pushing him for Spanish-speaking. Um, and, and at one point, I was winning that fight. Um, but it's now both. And he's found a way to make it both. Oh, is That's it? Yeah. Um, and it's all it's predominantly, it's predominantly women, the film. It's an incredible piece. Oh, is that right? Mm. So it's another... This seems like a trend, uh, Tim, that you have these deep relationships with these creative types. I mean, Quentin, of course, is is obviously another one. Uh, and, and I can't think of two directors that, who I don't know. I mean, it's superficial of me to say that Michelle and uh, Quentin are complete opposite sides of some sort of spectrum when I have no idea they could be very similar in some ways for all I know. Maybe their passion or their commitment. I well, don't they know. are. Yeah, they're, it's, it's most definitely that. I mean, the um, they're obsessed. And and um, the, <laughs> you know, I, would, I, I, I guess the person that I would more, I mean, I'm not one for comparisons, but the person that would I would more compare compare Michelle to would be Ken Loach, someone like oh Ken Loach, which is which is, I mean by that the the subject matter that that uh, Michelle um, is. Is is drawn to these are, are the are, are incredibly big, it's the big subject, you know, in in the sense uh, like this is a this it, on many levels is about death, you know, and 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 how we how we deal and how we cope with that. Um, especially to see it was about abuse uh, uh, and uh, and and bullying and how that uh, kind of. It, you know, can affect your life. His next one, I don't, I don't want to talk about, but one down the line we're dealing with, uh, which I'll be acting in, is about fascism. And so... Uh, that's Ken Loach you're talking about. Yeah, he's taking on big subjects, and Ken is... No, this is this is Michelle. Oh, it is Michelle, because I keep hearing Ken Loach is, like, retiring every year, and then... Ken does that. Ken does, you know, like, he de de dealt with the Irish-English right. issue in... Uh, in um, when the shakes of barley and so on, you know, so it, and poverty and, and social uh, issues, of course. Yeah. And I find that, I find that there's, there's an element of that with Michelle. I, I you know, I think that there, there would be a closer kind of breed. <laughs> Have you done a uh, Ken Loach film, by the way? What? Have you ever worked with Ken Loach? Only briefly. I've known Ken since I started. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually Alan Clark, who was my first, uh, director on on camera elephant in, yeah i did a, a television film called made in britain that was my first job and he had me come into the editing room after we'd finished completed filming and and also in, introduced me to ken loach and then I, when i was directing i only directed one time um i sat in uh, the editing suite with ken and, and watched him work a little bit on one of the films that he was making so 
you know, we've had we've had a, over the years. I mean, uh, kind of had a, a a good relationship, very good relationship. Well, he's another beloved. He's another one of the can stars, isn't he? Like, well, uh, you know, just, they seem to love him. Yeah, he is. I mean, he he's the only <laughs> he is he's a strange guy. We uh, we I was on the jury when we gave uh, the the Palm d'Or to um, uh, win the Sheikh for Bali, <laughs> and mm-hmm. he, he he very much wasn't expecting that. But um, yes, he, I think I think he's he's a can. He's one of the guys that can always brings in, you know. Yeah, definitely. definitely. And I think I think Michelle will be too. Well. This is great. Uh, I so so pre- pleased that I could arrange this with you. You yeah, know, I've been I've been I was a fan of mean from Mean Time all the way th- you know through Rosencrantz and Guildenstern or you know uh, <laughs> through <laughs> through of course uh, you know work with Quentin and and um, and now Chronic. I'm really gl- I'm glad I got the opportunity to see it. You and now this t- just just real quick, just tell me about this series if you can. Mention it. Where, 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 where? What platform? I guess is now what you ask, right? Um, I think it's. I. You know what? I don't know. You don't even know yet. It's okay. television. It, I guess it's it's um, television in Britain. But I would imagine it will it will have it will be an online event as well. Um, so. Right. Oh, it's, it's a British, British series. That's great. Yeah, yeah, and it's kind. It's kind of wild. It's 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 fun, and uh, I like I like to keep mixing it up as much as possible. And going from one kind of thing to another kind of thing, it, it just it, it keeps you on your toes, you know? <laughs> well, you're in a small company of actors who can do that. I mean, um, that's got to be very liberating. And, and um... You know, and I also, I, I mean, I did a television show a while back in America, and um, it was one of those network things. And, you know, it was very, very hard work. It was very difficult to get the scripts up to, you know, up to par sometimes it, we've sometimes we succeeded um but uh i liked the experiment of it and but i was i i thought when it was done i thought oh shit will i be able to get a job in a film again and it and it wasn't a problem and so i think this time i i feel a lot more liberated I'm, i mean if it doesn't work out you just go back and i go back to the job that i know you know but it keeps it, it keeps me fre- kind of fresh and and keeps me um it keeps me interested in the job of acting, I think. Well, yeah, and you and you're still continue doing theatre, or do you? No, I stopped that. I, I was okay. going to do a Harold Pinter play uh, in LA, but it, it kind of all fell apart. But I, I have incredible stage fright, and is that right? Yeah, yeah. So being able to do film and television it, it just frees me, keeps me away from from <laughs> that. I think the last the last play I did was with Sam Shepard in. Um, up in uh, New York, there we did the actor studio, but I, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I stay away from the stage. Although they keep asking me to go to come back. <laughs> no, I understand why. Okay, I found out. Chronic opens in on September twenty third, day before my birthday, is it in New York, and on the thirtieth in L A. and other select uh, cities, I guess. Um, right. And it stars the cinema, if you can. It's 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 it, it, it's really quite great to see it on a big screen. Well, I love it. Are you? Are you? Are you, are you does your uh, schedule allow you to come to New York? To or I'm going to try and be there. I'm going to. I think the plan is I'll come and I'll do a um, uh, with Michelle. We'll do a, a Q and A after a, a screening. That's what we're aiming aiming at. That's what we're trying well, to do. If so, I'll certainly. Uh, well, I, I, it would be good. Uh, I'll try to keep in touch with the uh, publicist to find out because Michelle Franco. Michelle, yes, Michelle Franco. I'm, I edit a little bit, <laughs> and a great, great uh, cast. Also, um, you know, it, I kick myself because I think I had once had an opportunity to bring on Michael Christopher, and I, I blew it. Oh yeah. But, but you know, hopefully, I'll have the time again. And Robin Bartlett, who I've seen around a lot, a lot of things, she's wonderful. Um, yeah. Yeah, what it's just a terrific, terrific film, and um, thank you for submitting to the uh, intense uh, scrutiny of this interview. Uh, <laughs> I, I know it, it was painful for you. No, it's fine. All good. Keep up can the I good work. You, sorry. Keep up the good work. I'm trying. Can I ask you one one small easy favor? What's that? Just if you could uh, uh, say something along the lines of "This is Tim Roth," you know, uh, and then whatever you, however you wanted to. 
uh, uh, who currently in Chronic or whatever, however you want to put it, and you're listening, and then to the, my show, which is called Film Wax Radio. Film Wax Radio? Film Wax Radio? Yeah, so this is Tim Roth, and you're listening to Film Wax Radio. But you could say, you know, currently in Chronic, whatever you want to say. Um, okay, uh, this is Tim Roth. Um, you can see uh, a, a film I did with uh, Michel Franco uh, called Chronic. And I'm uh, talking to Adam on Filmway. Terrific. Okay. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, again, thank you for everything. This was wonderful. Uh, you're welcome. All right. Thanks All for right. taking the time. All right. Take care now. And you. Bye. Bye-bye.